Pastor. Praise the Lord. The goodness of God is running after you. Miracles running after you. The power of the Lord running after you. What are you? It will get you and meet you there in Jesus' name. And you will sing and you will shout and you will testify of the goodness of God even tonight in Jesus' name. That goodness will not miss you and you will not miss the goodness of God. God is faithful. You will not be disappointed. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you for the excitement we have, the joy we have, and the expectation we have. And we know that your promises are yes and amen. And those promises will reach everyone today and turn every life around in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that everyone here, everyone online, everyone over the radio, everyone on, on the telly, we pray that you will reach everyone, touch everyone, and your miracle, your power, your freedom, your healing, your salvation will reach everyone as those things are running after us, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God has answered your prayer. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to John. John chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 16. For God so loved the world you must understand the character the characteristic the power the virtue and the ability of the one that so loved the world you must remember this is god this is creator this is healer this is savior and this is the one that has the control over every power on earth he is above all is beyond all is the one that so loved us is the one that is able able to do all things in every life is the god of the whole universe the god of heaven and the god of earth the god of power and the god of all possibilities because with men this may be impossible but not with god because with god tell me all things are possible is that god of all possibility that loved the world not just that he loved the world he so loved the world when you use that word so and you combine the word so with the love it means he loves us so much very much deeply and he loves us in such a way that no one and nothing can stop that love from reaching your life and flowing into your life it says for god so loved the world now that means the whole world that means all his creatures on earth that means everyone the sinner the saint the good the bad the corrupt and the clean he loves everyone he doesn't love always love what we do but he loves us he doesn't always love how we talk but he loves us he doesn't always love our action because it's a holy god it's a pure God. It's a righteous God. And the holy God cannot love anything unholy. But all the same. All the same. Because he is God. And because he doesn't want any of his creatures to perish. So he loves everyone. Tonight I come to announce to you he loves you. When you accept that love everything that is imperfect 
everything that is not proper everything that is not right in your life he will touch your life turn your life around his love manifested in you will put your life straight will put your life acceptable will make your life acceptable to him to heaven and to people here on earth you'll be happy that you came to christ tonight because the love of god will touch your life for god so loved the world that he gave that he gave a thousand angels could not have pleaded with Christ to come to this world never and all the people in heaven the saints who have gone they couldn't have pleaded with Christ to come to this world neither Moses nor David could have prevailed on Christ to come to the world the only one that could have prevailed on his only begotten son is God the Father, God the Righteous, God the Redeemer, and God the One that has all possibilities in his hand because Jesus can never say no to the Father and the Father can never say no to the Son for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son only begotten son christ had a special place that no other creature because he is not a creature he was not created he had been from all eternity he has a special place in the heart in the mind of the almighty god he is the beloved one is the son of god is the head and the master and the captain of all the angels and the saints in heaven because of being that only begotten only begotten son now the father said my son beloved son begotten son the world is rotten but understand that's the work of my hand all those people there the sinner the criminal the idol worshiper i didn't create them for that they are mine they are corrupt the world has gone astray and it's not my joy that any of my creatures the creation of my hand will perish and because i'm a holy god i have to punish sin if they continue like that criminals corrupted people evil people i cannot live with them for all eternity but they are my creatures i want them transformed i want them changed but i have already enacted put in place a law and i cannot deny myself i have said the soul that seen it it shall die and i've announced that i've reached that i've affirmed that and they have all sinned and there's nothing else i can do by my law by my edict they will die that death means separation from god for all eternity but my son my only begotten son they are my creatures to see them in hell forever and ever i will have to do that if there is no change there is no turning if there is no salvation so my son i have a plan you you're pure you're perfect you're holy and you are god god the son but now i'll give you human flesh you become son of man though you are son of god and you will go because you are perfect you don't have any sin to confess any sin to atone for they are sinners and the only one 
that can save them will be somebody that has no sin pure perfect internal external you are the only one qualified to save the world and to make them turn unto me and the son said father i will go i will sacrifice i will do everything it takes for everyone who believes to be saved and so the father said good you and i agree together that we will go through this avenue and through this channel the pure one the just one the perfect one died for the impure and died for the unjust and died for the people that do not that did not have the good life to show the heavenly father and that's the reason why christ came and that's the plan of christ coming that whosoever believes in him a jew a gentile an israelite anyone in any nation that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life have not just a good life have not just a beautiful human life have not just a you know prospered life here have not just a, you know a satisfactory life here he will have everlasting life that's why we're here that's why you're here everlasting life if we come here and we listen to the message if all we get is a good financial life that's limited that's short if all we have is a prospered life we have money we can build all that building that's for the world what he wants us to have is not a successful life on earth a prospered life and have money a monetary life you know on earth and i have children have the, all those things are good there for the world here what he wants us to have is to go beyond what people have on earth and we have everlasting life today everlasting life coming to you and that everlasting life covers everything every other thing you need they're embedded they're included in that everlasting life today we're talking of god's will and man's willingness for full freedom god's will god's will your salvation is god's will because he so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son for your salvation your joy is God's will, God's will. Your forgiveness is God's will. Some people say, I don't know whether I'm meant for salvation or not. Look at this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's you, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life the message god's will and man's willingness you see you have to be willing that's why it says whosoever believeth whosoever says i know i'm not perfect i know i'm not pure I'm, i know i'm not sinless i know that condemnation will visit all my sins but i come to christ and whosoever believeth in him that's your willingness right there for full freedom we're dividing the message to three parts number one the will of the redeeming god what's that our final salvation initial salvation now continuing salvation in our lives and then the final salvation we get to heaven the will of the redeeming god 
our final salvation number two the unwillingness of religious men for free salvation religious men they don't want to have free salvation they say no i don't take anything free from anybody i will work for it my friend there's something you cannot work for all your good works they like fill their hearts they will not merit salvation they will not acquire salvation they will not buy salvation and the only salvation you can have is the salvation that is provided by christ on the cross of calvary and you pay nothing nobody will be able to brag and say you know i got saved how did i get saved i labored for that i struggled for that i paid money to religious society i even built this i built a sanctuary and so now because of that i'm saved never i turned over a new leaf and i brushed myself up and I washed myself, you know, I had to travel to River Jordan and then I was there and it was there I got salvation. Never, it will never happen like that. Naaman washed in the river, but understand his skin was cleansed, not his heart, not his soul salvation is for the heart is for the soul any washing you have may do something externally but you know that same body that is cleansed that you know free from all that uh, leprosy that body will be buried in the ground and the soul will return unto the lord it is the cleansing of the heart is the saving of the soul the soul will return to the lord and the salvation the soul will take to the lord and will be accepted and will be approved of god is the one that came from calvary through christ christ paid it all for you free you have nothing to do point number two the willingness of religious men for free salvation number three the willingness of receptive men the people that say i receive i believe i have nothing to do in working for it i receive it free from the lord the willingness we have to be willing to have that of receptive men is full salvation the full salvation that comes from the lord let's come to number one number one is the will of the redeeming god a final salvation that's his will look at first timothy chapter three chapter two rather verse three in verse three it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior this is good your salvation this is beautiful your salvation and this is obtainable acceptable and obtainable we can obtain it from the lord this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior look at verse 4 in verse 4 who will have his will who will have all men to be saved uh, for him a plan for the whole world a plan for every man every woman every boy every girl in the world whatever your stage whatever your situation and whatever your status and whoever you are he planned for your salvation and it says who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth that's his will and that will will be fulfilled tonight in your life 
We're looking at Second Peter chapter 3. In Second Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9. In verse 9, it tells us, Because God the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Whether it's a threat, is threat, threatening, a promise, God is not slack. Uh, there was uh, one man that said he didn't believe in God. And he stood in the open, in the presence of everyone. He looked up and said, God, I don't believe you exist. Okay, if you are there, knock me, strike me, so I die. And no knocking came, no striking came, and the man did not die. And he walked away and said, you see, I told you, God is not there. Because if God is there and I challenged him like that, he should have killed me. Atheistic man, ungodly man, God is not slack concerning his promise because he doesn't want you to die he sent jesus to go and save you that's why he didn't strike you at that time there are people that will say okay they say that uh, you know this is bad that is bad and they say god condemns is uh, this okay god are you there i'm going to do this and then they do it and they are waiting for a knock on their head they knock a dagger in their tummy and that does not happen and they don't understand that is because god is not willing that anybody perishes and he gives us a long rope but understand that long rope somebody can get to the end of that long rope and he will now eventually face judgment while the mercy of god God is extended to you today you will have the mercy of God you'll have the salvation of God because the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards what towards us is long suffering you did something and your conscience tells you this is bad this is wrong this is evil okay if it's evil let god act and do something about it and god does apparently nothing about it but he records it in heaven that this mr a this miss b or mrs b that this is what he always does what she always does he looks at me and counts me like a blind god but he writes it his mercy does not bring judgment immediately his love does not bring judgment immediately but he keeps the record and he does it again he keeps the record a lot of things reaching in the book of records concerning a concerning b concerning c concerning that other person but why he is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish he already sent his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish and god is following up on that if i kill everybody the moment the sin how about the sacrifice of my only begotten son how about the love that i have for the whole world how about the chance i want to give to everyone to be saved the chance is coming to you tonight salvation is coming to you tonight the love of god and the mercy of god coming to you tonight because it's not it's long suffering long suffering that means that means that means he suffers pain in his heart when we sin he suffers agony in his heart when we're seen and 
he has been suffering now long time because of all the bad things and the evil things we do we're not concerned about the pain that the almighty god is suffering because of our evil and when you suffer pain in the heart actually that's the pain that makes jesus christ to be sweating blood in the garden of gethsemane and the father has suffered and is suffering long the son has suffered and suffering long and he has paid the price for salvation and yet there are people that still remain in their sin causing pain and suffering for the almighty and he suffered long but his long suffering not willing that anyone should perish but that all shall come to repentance he wants us to turn he wants us to come and say i am sorry i confess i now see the pain i cause the almighty god and christ and i turn and i repent and then god will say he'll not say you've waited so long he's long suffering he'll not say you've done something unpardonable no he's been waiting for you and tonight as god is waiting for you you're welcome Amen. i will come so that you will come to repentance and you'll come to salvation and you'll come to the fullness of salvation and initial salvation your name goes into the book of life do you remember the congressional song we sang now i am forgiven and the white robed angels they sing a sinner has come home and there is joy in heaven because we come to the lord tonight is your night salvation has come for you look at number two here number two we're looking at the unwillingness of religious men for free salvation uh, that was the problem of the pharisees when christ came to the world the savior brought salvation his name and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins and jesus began his ministry going everywhere and preaching the message and the word of the kingdom that the kingdom of god is here and anyone can come in and become a citizen of the kingdom of god and those jews they attended his meeting but he came to argue they came to condemn the free salvation that the lord has brought they thought every time they came back home from the market they'll wash their hands and they'll wash other parts of the body and they thought that cleaning cleansing of the hand will bring them salvation on the sabbath day on their worship day they will not go a particular distance they will not do something they might not even cook because they thought all those works good works according to them that they did they thought all that will bring them salvation they were working for their salvation but they were meticulous about small small inconsequential things but they were not serious about the things that were really essential look at that man on the side of the road he had been led wounded to die and the priest passed by and looked at him and he went his way and the levites passed by those were the religious uh, uh, people great 
high religious people in the land looked at him and passed by but the samaritans that they thought were bad people they were better than all those religious men it's a samaritan that came there and showed love that if i were in this condition i would want somebody to help me carry me and take me to a place i can be taken care of the samaritan that appeared irreligious they were better than those religious people all their sacrifices and everything they did was like fill the rags and the fill the rags could not recommend them before the everlasting god so these people they were unwilling to take the free salvation that christ has brought when christ healed anyone they found a negative interpretation to that healing and they themselves they didn't come so that the lord could heal them look at matthew chapter 13 we're looking at verse 15 matthew chapter 13 verse 15 for these people these people people's heart is waxed gross when somebody is dull of hearing when somebody's heart is so heavy that no information will get into that heart simple-minded people hear that information and they follow the instruction and they are saved but these religious people they wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and these were the people they had read the Old Testament over and over. Like, um, like uh, Nicodemus that came and uh, said, You are a good master. The Lord says, Stop all the flattery except a man, old man, grown up man young man anyone except a man be born again he cannot see he cannot enter the kingdom of god and nicodemus he had read old testament over and over from cover to cover he said how can that be will i enter into my mother's womb and then be born again and jesus said except a man be born anew and born from heaven he cannot taste he cannot see he cannot perceive he cannot enter the kingdom of god and the man had a kind of difficult situation on his side he couldn't understand and the same thing with all the other pharisees all the other religious people that's what jesus said except your righteousness shall exceed and go beyond the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees he shall in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven if all the righteousness you have is the one that you do with the ability of falling adam that will not get you to heaven i do this i do this i go here i go there i repair that i restore that i do all that all that cannot save you that's why it says these people are dull of hearing their eyes they have closed they can come to the meeting they can listen to the lord jesus christ as he offers the free salvation but they close their eyes they say i was born in that religion i can attend all the meetings my friend is inviting me. i can go there but i will not change anything i will not come to christ i will not come to the savior deliberately they close their eyes are you there and you even say you carry the bible you are christian in coach i was born a christian uh, uh, nobody is born of a christian all have sinned and come short of the glory of god it's when the message of christ new life in christ and freedom from christ when that comes to you and then you say i see i am a sinner i see all this path of turning over a new leaf 
I cannot get to heaven that way. All the resolution on the last day of December, every year, all the resolutions you make, the good, good resolutions, but those resolutions do not make you righteous or redeemed. You have to understand that it's only the redemption that Christ has done, not the resolution that you make will take you to heaven. It says, their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see what their eyes. You come to the point where you say, I see, I see. All the so-called good works I do, there's a bad motive behind those so-called good works. I give money to that. There's a motive. They're trying to buy salvation. That when they when they, they put all my good works together, and then my bad works, my good works will supersede and will exceed every bad thing I've done. Uh huh. You have a motive, and that motive, you want to relegate Calvary to the background. I don't need Calvary. I don't need the death of Christ. I don't need the sacrifice of Christ. I'm going to multiply my good works. You know, as you push away Calvary and push away Christ, you push away God because it's God that so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And it is that sacrifice of Calvary that God, that heaven approves of. And once you close your eyes and you say, no, I don't want that, there's no salvation. Look at that verse again. And it says that, and hear with their ears, they block their ears. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that when you are told the good news. You don't want to hear good news. All that remains is bad news. When you are told of the only way to get to heaven, you say, I don't want to hear. All that remains is the way to hell. And that's the reason why turn around today. God is not willing that you shall perish. Then it says, and that and should understand what their heart. When your heart is not there, you have been told, uh, somebody is telling you an important, uh, an important uh, thing, uh, message, and uh, your heart is not there. You're looking at him, your mind is not there. You're looking at the whole situation, but your heart is not there. You're doing other things. You're thinking other things. You're roaming about the world in your heart. Eventually, when that thing we've heard, we have to take decision on them. What decision are you going to take when your heart was not there? And it says, lest they should be converted. You see that those Pharisees, those religious people, those religious men, it says they blocked their ears, they closed their eyes, and they made their hearts dull of hearing lest they should be converted and I should heal them. Have you looked, have you read the New Testament? Among the people that were healed, how many Pharisees were there? Just a few, just a few. The one that has a child and then he said to the Lord, come before my child dies. A few of them. How many of them were saved? Uh, you know, Nicodemus, a few of them. Uh, but the majority of them were so religious that they will not give attention and they will not put their faith in the message of Christ, in the messiahship of Christ. And in the ability to set free by Christ. They were unwilling even though they were religious. Tonight, you will not be unwilling. You will not continue like those Pharisees. I have my church. Church does not save. I have my own principles. Principles do not save.
I have my own religious guru. Those religious gurus, they need salvation themselves. And somebody who does not have salvation, how can he give you salvation? We need the salvation of the Lord. As you come today, the Lord will save you. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, But blessed are your eyes. You are blessed. With the willingness, you are blessed. With coming to Christ, you are blessed. Leaving all that assembly of religious men, and you come to Christ to say, Whatever they do, I was born into this world all alone. I didn't know then when I was born into this world. And if I came to this world without them, you are going to get to heaven without them. All those doubters, all those unbelievers, all those who are dull of hearing, all those who are saying they don't want this, they don't want that, you say, I am willing. Am I talking to somebody there? You're willing. I am willing. Salvation has come to you. But blessed are your eyes for what they see. You see the glory of God. You see the freedom in salvation. You will see the power of the Lord walking in your life in Jesus' name. And blessed are your ears for they hear. I hear. I accept. I believe. It's confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number three now. Point number three is the willingness of receptive men for his full salvation. The willingness. That, that's, all, that's all we need. That's all we need. It is not that I know the Bible from cover to cover. That's good, but I, we don't need that now. All we need now is to say, uh, you know, when uh, you know, your wife has uh, prepared um, uh, that good food for you, you've been hungry, and you said, uh, Daddy, the food is ready. All you need to come to do is to come and eat. What's the recipe there? What are the various chemical uh, reactions there? What uh, nutrients or what? This one is this one protein? Is this one carbohydrate? Is this whatever? You don't need all that. Everything has been looked into and every good thing has been prepared for you. Come and dine. Come and eat. Come and take. I was waiting for a good amen there. All that Satan has taken away from you, the Lord has conquered Satan. And he has provided for it. Says you don't need to fight, you don't need to struggle. Everything the devil took away from you, everything is available now. Come and take your portion. Salvation available, come and take your portion. But you know, there are you know mathematical minds, and they are still analyzing, and even me that you know I did mathematics and I did it to you know a high level when I heard on the feast of April 1964 when I heard salvation is available you know I've been a gentle person I didn't do my bad bad things in the public and everybody thought I was saved already but I knew I knew I had not got to that point where I said yes to Calvary when I had the invitation I didn't stay back and the preacher did not uh, you know mathematics and all that I, all he knew is this glorious gospel i didn't start analyzing i didn't start uh, you know putting this and putting that come i came and now the lord has given me salvation you will be like i have been you will have what i have heard and all you do is what I did. Don't analyze. Don't, you know, put this and this. Just come. Salvation. Giving and saint from heaven has come 
unto you. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as college, they will be as white as snow. Tonight, tonight, do your sins be as college, deep, great, red, dangerous? It says, He will so wash you, you'll be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Don't you like that? I said, Don't you like that? I like that. That's the favor and the grace and the love of heaven for you. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, if you be willing, it says come. If you be willing and obedient, it says come. This is available for you. Ye shall eat the good of the land. That one needs a bright, great shouting amen. The good of the promised land will be yours. The good of the heavenly land will be yours. And the good of the natural land here will be yours. Every place you go, as we are coming like this, every closed door will open. Prosperity, sufficiency, satisfaction, you will eat the good of the land because christ has come that he will give you life and give you life more abundantly i rejoice with you i said i rejoice with you good thing has come salvation has come eternal life has come come and take your portion I said, come and take your portion. There is double portion. There is single portion. There is no portion. Elisha, I need a double portion. Other people, they just got single portion. But the 50 sons of the prophet, the 50 sons who had been saying do you know the lord is going to take your master away from your head today i know it hold your peace you know they didn't ask for anything and while elisha got double portion while naaman got a single portion all these religious people talking 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 Elisha, do you know? Elisha, do you know? They didn't have any portion. Double portion, single portion, or no portion. You have to decide. While everything is made available, that you say, I am willing, I receive today. And this salvation that will heal you, that will set you free, that will make you victorious, is come unto you today yeah. it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed the lord loves you he doesn't want you to perish in all the de degrading things you've done he says yes i know I didn't like those things you did, but I love you. And that's why I bring salvation and forgiveness unto you. And this will make God forget every bad thing you ever did. He'll bring all your sins together and drop them in the depths of the sea. And he'll never come back to condemn you anymore. And when the time comes for you to get to heaven, you'll walk gallantly and happily and joyfully without any hindrance. You will get to heaven. And so, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, you want the salvation from the Lord that he has already sacrificed to give you. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand 
wherever you are god bless you there god bless you there it is going to be a good day for you the best of days for you raise up that hand if you're raising up the hand please stand up please god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you to the right in the middle and to the left anywhere you are just uh, raise up your hand and get up there you are on radio you are watching over the television you are online this good thing salvation forgiveness freedom is coming to you now please uh, raise up your hand there and no excuse no excuse no excuse i'm good no nobody is good only god tell the lord as you are standing up and say lord here am i i praise your name you give jesus christ unto me you have been long suffering not willing that i shall perish but that i shall come to repentance lord i repent lord i turn receive me lord you will never say no you will receive you just now let's pray together father in the mighty name of jesus i pray for everyone that has yielded to the invitation that you have given i pray lord forgive them in jesus name i pray their salvation assured salvation a certain salvation a confirmed salvation give to everyone now in jesus name new life eternal life everlasting life the life of god in man give everyone right now and let the joy of salvation be in their hearts and confirm and write their names in the book of life in heaven thank you lord it is done in jesus name we pray Praise the Lord, he has answered your prayer. He has recognized your repentance and he has approved of your faith in Christ. Now you are saved. I am saved. I am saved. And everyone who knows that you have been saved, even though you are sitting down, you were saved yesterday or the other day, or you have been saved before, shout it aloud, I am saved. I am saved. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. We're we'll calling on our moderating overseer tonight to lead us during this time, and then after, I'll come back and God will let the healing power flow into every life. The Lord bless you for the decision tonight. Please just uh, make yourself available. Raise up your hand there. The counselors are coming right to you. They'll take your name, your address, the place you live your phone number please give them your correct details now you've given your life to christ it means you have a changed life now no longer the old life that you live now you become a child of god by the decision you have taken all the details you give them let it be the correct detail about you your name probably the place you live there is a name by which you are called you can also give that name and you tell them when you get there ah, this is my name but call this name they will direct you your house address it could be the place you live. You don't have a clear address that can easily be located. You can use, maybe it's close to either a school or any place that could easily be located. Please, you cooperate with the counselors and give your correct detail. The Lord will bless you as you do that. And that will also help 
us to reach you and to help you to stand and follow the Lord in your newfound faith. As you do that sincerely, the Lord will bless you. And for those of you who are watching online, or you've just given you've just given your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. There is a link, and you need to listen carefully and look at it. It's gckhq.org slash connect below your player. Please click on it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Please do that. The Lord will bless you for that decision as you cooperate. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp. To this phone number, please listen carefully. Or you are there with your writing pen, please write it down. Plus 234 915 I repeat that phone number. Plus 234 915 four 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 nine two six three there'll be a special meeting lunch hour with jesus for all those who gave their lives to the lord jesus christ tonight tomorrow at the call there the main auditorium by 3 p.m those of you who gave your life to Christ Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the Impact Program, and yesterday at the Crusade. And those of you who received Christ here this morning during the pastor's message, and this evening, please, we need every one of you to be in that meeting tomorrow. 3 p.m. We call it lunch hour with Jesus. Come and there'll be some package for you to take home. Things that will help you to study, to read, to know how to follow the Lord and that will tell you more. We also want to inform you about the Converts Rally. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ Sunday, 2nd July. That's coming Sunday. First Sunday in July, which is the second. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor, the man of God, will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. And I say thank you for your response to this banquet. For those in Port Harcourt here, the banquet is coming up on the 2nd of July 2023. And our state of Asiak here will speak more on that. He'll tell us details. The time will be 3 p.m. Please take note. Your address, your phone number, please give a clear detail of how we can reach you. 
You have taken the best decision in life tonight. The man of God shared his own experience. And he has said it. What the Lord has done in his life, he will do in your life. What the Lord has given him, he will also give to you. That's a great word of encouragement. A clear testimony from the man of God. Just to tell you that it's the Lord who does the work. And that's what he has done in your life tonight. God bless you for this decision. Please, let's have your details and we reach you and help you. God bless you for doing that. Counselors, please, let's uh, move fast. Those of them who can write, please just give them the writing pen, so allow them to write. Those who cannot write, help them. Please, let's uh, patiently get the details from them so we can be of help to them. Let's do that. If the counselors have not reached you, please signify by raising up your hand so they will reach you quickly. Please do that. If no counselor have reached you, just raise up your hand. That will help them to come closer to you and take your detail. Please do that. While the man of God is waiting, we'll need to settle this first. This is the first thing. The very first thing. The Lord has given you this opportunity. It's a great blessing. Your decision tonight. Once again, I say God bless you. For this wonderful decision, this best decision you have taken in your life. Cooperate with the counselors and counselors, please. Let's try to move fast and get the details. Please get the details. Cross check the phone number and make sure it's 11 digits. And for those of you who are giving your details, please cooperate with the counselors and give your correct detail to them. Your correct details. That's what will help us to reach you and to be of help to you. Counselor, if you are true with one or two persons, please move to the next person. Let's move and um, please, while we are also waiting, we expect you to be fast. Please get the details correctly. God bless you for doing that. I believe those of you online, the information will pass to you. It's clear. I'm going to re repeat the WhatsApp number for those of you who have listened through radio and television. The WhatsApp number is plus 234 This decision tonight to follow Christ. Please reach them. Let's do that diligently, please.
If the counselor have not reached you, please, you are the far back. Just raise up your hand. They will locate you quickly. Okay, thank you. They will brother. locate you, you quickly. Okay, thank you, brother. God bless you. I can see your flag. Yes, to my right. If you are true, thank you very much. I've seen you there. The middle row. Okay, thank you. To the far right, thank you very much. I've seen you as well. Those are the far back. Can you do same? If you are true. Once you are true, just wave your flag. To my left hand side, if you are true, can you please wave the flag? Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. To the extreme, if you are true, can you please wave your flag at me? My extreme left. Please, let's make sure we reach every one of them. All who have taken a decision tonight to follow Christ. While the man of God is patiently waiting, let's do this one and ensure we reach everybody. Thank you very much for the good job you are doing. Yes, those are the far back. If you are true, please wave your flag at me. The rest of you are sitting down. Make this a time of prayer. Present your request to the Lord. The man of God will soon be coming to pray the miracle prayer that will bring down tonight your desire. God will grant you your desire. Thank you very much. Can we all rise up? Let's rise up on our feet. The man of God is coming right now to pray the miracle prayer. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Look at you, hallelujah there. I said praise the Lord. Right now, the healing of the Lord is running after you. Deliverance running after you. It will catch up with you right now. Miracle. Miracle in your life. Miracle in your body. And those online, that miracle is available for you. Those who are watching uh, by television, you're listening on the radio, it's calm. I said it's calm. Whatever your challenge and whatever you are presenting before the Lord, your answer has now come. Yeah. Let's raise up the hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And after the final amen, you check up, you will see it is done. Yeah. The God who never fails will visit everyone right now. Yeah. Miracle is coming upon your life. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you. You're a good God, a great God, a glorious God, a faithful God. We're asking you, know, according to your word, do what you have said in Jesus' name. From the top of the head to the tip of the toe, wherever there's any challenge, any sickness, any infirmity, Lord, I pray, touch your people, heal your people, set your people free in jesus name i pray lord healing will come for everyone 
deliverance for everyone and anything that had been there with pain with wound with bleeding everything to stop right now in jesus name all those long-standing problems all those long-standing sicknesses by your mighty power let your hand touch everyone and set them free in jesus name blind eyes i command you be opened in jesus name deaf ears dumb tongues be loosed in jesus name any torment any affliction in the head i cast out that evil tormenting spirit come out in jesus name swelling any part of the body lord this is your work touch them remove the swelling in jesus name pain attack affliction whatever a long-standing wound that is open there dry up in jesus name everyone now with the needed miracle to the right to the left to the center to the back everywhere and those on radio television online i pray the power of god touches you right now turns around your life right now and the needed expected miracle be done in every life joy of receiving and testimony in every mouth in jesus mighty name we pray it is done i got my miracle the lord confirm it in jesus name Amen.